you're not playing these cards in your commander decks, and you're missing out. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, PC, and that makes us the Nitpicky Nerds. We make videos every single day about Commander. Obviously, you could support this channel by giving us dollars through Patreon.com, and we'd really appreciate it. Actually, we love you as much as we can without making you uncomfortable, because you're literally keeping the lights on. Yes. Thank you so much for your support via Patreon. We would also love it if anytime you buy Magic Cards using TCGplayer.com, if you started with our affiliate link, because when you do, you support this channel by buying the cards at the same price and getting them to your house at the same time, but the nerds get a kickback. We're sponsored by Moxfield. There's an ad in the middle of this video, or maybe the beginning, or maybe the end. You'll never know, but you can guess, and we'll tell you that you're wrong in the comments. Also, happy birthday to everyone whose birthday falls on today. You rock. Yes, so let's hop into this video. All the cards we're about to list are in less than 2% of the possible commander decks they could be in, according to EDH Rec. Way underplayed as far as we're concerned with all of these. And we're gonna get into the first one right exactly now. It's Tragic Arrogance. 2% of decks this is in. Yes, this is one of our favorite board wipes, period. This card is really, really good. And I know it has a lot of competition. There's competition all over. White is the board wipe colors, but there are a lot of ones that are on the same level that are getting way more play. And there's ones that are, we would just put on lower levels that are also seeing way more, more play, way more play, which is kind of mind boggling when you think about it. Something like uh, Wrath of God is in 9% of decks. I think that it does cost one less mana, and it's like slightly worse than Tragic Arrogance. Like I want to play Tragic Arrogance over it, but it's in seven percent more decks. That is a huge, huge difference. And Tragic Arrogance is only like a dollar. What Tragic Arrogance does is it just offsets all of the advantage on the board. You get to keep all of your best types as long as you're somewhat diversified. Don't play this in Enchantment Tribal. There's not that many of those decks represented in the ninety-eight percent of people who aren't playing this, but. Once you diversify a little bit, you keep your best mana rock, your best enchantment, and your best creature. And everybody else keeps their worst of all of those things. And a lot of the types overlap. So like, oh, you can keep your burnish shard. You can keep your 1-1 one, one, uh, co uh, construct token. I think that something that goes under the radar that people just, I think, mess up with this card is that there are other versions of this card that are bad where your opponents choose, yeah, right? Like Divine Reckoning or something like that. Divine Reckoning or what is the uh, Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. Mm -hmm. These cards are bad because they give your opponents the choice. What really takes Tragic Arrogance up to the next level is the fact that you make every single choice for this card. You make your choices and you make your opponent choices, meaning you're just going to have the best board afterward Period. No matter what. Yes. I, farewells in 13% of decks. That makes sense to me. That card's fantastic. It might be better than Tragic Arrogance, but I feel like they're teetering in the same, like, you know, A-tier board wipes. But we got things like Day of Judgments in 3%. That's more. Winds of Abandons in 3%. Vanquish the Horde is in 7 That card is definitely up there and deserves it. But, like, Fumigate, 4%. Cleansing Nova, 7%. Doomscarf, 3%. There, Those three cards, at least, are way worse than Tragic Arrogance, in my opinion. And I don't think you should be playing less of these other cards necessarily, just say so you should be playing Tragic Arrogance alongside them a lot of the time. Like, sometimes you're going to want to cut a board wipe for Tragic Arrogance. Like, I would take Day Judgment out every time and put in Tragic Arrogance, but on the same note, I just think decks can play these next to each other. Austria Command at 13% of decks, that's ridiculous. That card's good, but Tragic Arrogance being in 2%, now that's just... That's mine. They one. play pretty similarly. Why can't we get these percentages up more? I just feel like people are definitely missing out and could be having much more fun blowout wild times with their board wipes. So if you have a white deck and you're not playing Tragic Arrogance, check it out, put it in, and test it, because it really is an amazing card. You're going to love it. We've literally been hyping this card since the beginning of this channel like three years ago. Yeah, and we haven't, we're not going to stop, because it's still one of the best board wipes you can play. It never, I, every time I think it's going to see more play, it just never goes up in play, and it's shocking. Get in your, get your head in the game. Get some, get some more wins. We got to go to another second card. It's Ledger Shredder. This is in 2% of decks as well. It's a 1-3 that connives whenever anyone casts their second spell, which, as it turns out, happens a lot. Yes. Uh, if you're just playing the game of Commander, I would say you're going to get this trigger at least two times every go around the table, and that is a lot of card selection. I love this when you have a lot of graveyard synergy. Uh, Blue-red Spellslinger decks tend to have a lot of flashback spells, things they can play from their graveyards. Your blue-black decks tend to have a ton of reanimator, things you want to discard. If you care about drawing a lot or <laughs> discarding a lot, yeah. Yeah, so all of these decks just, I think, want Ledger Shredder. It's one of the best things at doing what it does. And on top of all that, this thing just grows into an unstoppable monster in the air. In two or three go around the tables, this thing is just like, it's like a seven, seven, nine or yeah, something. Yeah, seven, eight, nine power, depending on how many times you've connived. It is just 
way stronger than it looks. Yeah, it's really fantastic. People are starting to figure it out. But a lot of where the price comes from this card is like modern and mm -hmm. people are playing and trying legacy and whatnot. But like commander players, get on it. There's four players that get to feed into this. And we always say casting two spells a turn or more is one of the best things you can do. It's how you win games. And this card just abuses that. It only costs two mana. Just set it and forget it and have an amazing time. The price for these cards, I don't think I, I would say that one of the limiting factors on how few decks this sees play in is the price. You could look at any number of cards that are of similar power, cost more money, and they're in more decks. Yeah, exactly. I think that price is almost irrelevant at some point. It, it does play some factor, but right. I think that factor is within 1% or 2%. It's, I don't think it's within uh, a higher percentage than that because, honestly, there are so many cards that cost like $30, $40. They're just in tons and tons of decks. Yeah, we're, we're talking like, oh, you know, back to Tragic Aaron. It's like, well, it sees play in 2% of the decks, but like how many of our decks we put it in? It's like 15%. Ledger Shredder? I would play it at least in one out of ten of my blue decks. There's so many overlapping things that it covers that it's, like, the best at. Yeah, exactly. And, and on top of that, it's a flyer. This thing, like, all the things it Just does. Just the gravy, yeah. Like, literally, all these things it does. Flying is just such a relevant ability that when you can get a good effect on a card and you just throw flying on it, that card's already that's, that card just gets a huge boost because now it's just now it's just actually getting in and dealing that damage consistently. Right, and you look at what power levels Tragic Arrogance can shine in, most of them, but as you start creeping up where Boar Wipes aren't even as relevant as a card type, you lose it a little bit. Ledger Shredder just never stops being relevant. As soon as people are starting, like, slamming, slinging spells all the time, this thing just digs you into your combos or whatever, or... You scale it back, it just digs you into whatever win con, and it's just a 7-8. Seven, eight, seven, yeah, eight. exactly. I think Ledger Shredder is great all the way up to CD. It's so good. Please try this card. It's less expensive than it used to be. Yeah, and if you want to see how many decks we have each of these cards, then you can use Moxfield.com. Every single one of the Nitpicking Nerds' current deck list are on that website, constantly being updated. I just finished my Urza Chief Artificer? Chief High Artificer? No. Dad bot. Dad bot. I finished Dad bot Urza earlier today. So that deck is all together. You can go check out my list and tell me what you think. Put a comment. Tell me what you would add that's not in the list. Yeah, and very consistently, I'm budget. I'm brewing on a budget for Moxfield. And one of the things that I think this actually saves way more time than it looks like when you're trying to get to fifty dollar decks, like I am. I like to hit every once in a while. Update to cheapest. It takes every card in your deck. Auto resets it to the cheapest version you can buy on TCG Player. Use our link. And it just does it for you. You don't have to go manually in like, what's the cheapest version of this? It is like a blanket time saver. It's amazing. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't like TCG Player prices, you can also switch your settings so that you can use Card Kingdom prices. That, right, which we have no opinion on. Which Yeah, exactly. So you can literally just change what your setting is for where you get the price from depending on what your preferences are. Third card. Third card is Savala's Stampede. It's one percent. This card is great. This is a it's six mana. Everyone votes wild or free. If they vote uh, free, you get to put uh, permanent from your hand onto the battlefield. And if they vote wild, you reveal from the top of your deck until you hit a creature, then put that on the battlefield. Plus, you get a vote. Yes, you you do get a vote. Every single player votes. You pretty much always vote wild. I think that the thing that some people miss out about this card is wild is mana advantage and card advantage. And it just replaces Salvala Stampede, so everything else is gravy. Yeah, and exactly. When you drop cards in for free, that's mana advantage, and that is a very strong effect. But when and uh, but Wild is a lot stronger overall, and like you're hoping people vote for that. But sometimes they will, especially if you have seven, eight cards in your hand. They're like, we, what are we going to do? It's like the best cards in their hand, are. it's probably better to shoot for the random here. Yeah, this card falls off a little bit when you have like one card in your hand, but even so... At least it replaces itself. At least you get something out of it. And when you have any more cards than that, which is most of the game, let's let's like ninety percent of the game, you're just this gigantic threat. Where it's like, well, what if they go? What if the permanents they put into play are like fires of Yavimaya and then like an Ulamog or something? That's why you play Savala Stampede is because your deck is jam packed full of those cards. Yeah, exactly. You have tons and tons of threats all over the place, meaning that you can flip random ones or there can be awesome in your hand. And this comes down decently early like turn for a big deck i mean six mana is a lot but when you have seven eights and nine drops because you're that kind of monstrous deck then this is going to be dropping in even bigger things you're always going to get a huge chunk of mana advantage that's what's so awesome about this card you never don't get mana advantage i've never seen this card play six mana and not get at least six mana worth of permanence onto the battlefield yeah this is like the just an absolute killer in these big stompy decks it is kind of it almost feels like cheating because you're just like, oh, 
I didn't ramp. I didn't do big mana things. I just played this one card, and oh, look, here's 30 power. Yeah, exactly. This is a card that can bail you out of a bad hand. You can keep something with, like, a ton of high drops, some Vile Stampede, and one ramp spell. It's like, that's a bad hand. But it's Saval about to be employed by turn five. Yeah, exactly. Savala Stampede can just bail you out of something, like a situation that you should never even be in the game. It's like, you. this can be the only spell you cast all game, and you can be ahead on board. Oh, yeah. This can be the, yeah, this can be the first spell you play, and you're suddenly just immediately ahead. Let's go to the next one. It's Incarnation Technique. Also, only in 1% of black decks, despite there being many, many reanimator black decks. Because what it does is you mill five twice and reanimate two things, and you get to give away a copy, which is maybe what's scaring people. But I don't know if I've ever seen somebody get something good off my at least 20 times I've cast this. You pick the deck that doesn't do reanimate things. They're going to get like a Steve or a sad robot or something. I've seen people get decent things off of... Uh, it still doesn't even feel bad. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. It doesn't feel bad. You give them one thing and then you reanimate your two best things. And you're in a deck that is designed to, of course, take advantage of reanimation. The fact that this is five mana reanimate two things is just amazing. And on top of that, this is one of the only reanimation spells in the whole entire format that you can cast without having a graveyard. And without worrying about anyone stopping you because as soon as it resolves, there's no targeting. There's no more window for them to respond. So you can have an empty graveyard or whatever. This could also be the first spell you cast in a game and it's like, oops, here's Toxril. You can't stop it. It's just going to go and play. Oh, here's another one. Oops, it's like Noxious Gearhawk or something or even just like Sad Robot. I'll go get four more mana worth of value. Yeah, exactly. And this card does tend to get you much more than five mana worth of value. Way more, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's very common too. And it's like, and something I just mentioned is that reanimation spells often take a lot of setup uh, where you got to put stuff in your graveyard, you're tutoring, discarding, and all that. This one just doesn't require all that, meaning that you don't have to go through the extra step of putting it in your graveyard. You can just skip it and get it in your graveyard with Incarnation Technique and then reanimate it so you can get a ton more advantage. Yeah, I mean, you got your best of the best, like your A-tier reanimate, reanimate spells like reanimate, animate that, and like sometimes necromancy and stuff. But this is like one of the next best ones to me. Um, it scales pretty well. You can get this pretty high up with power level. It's just going to be backbreaking because it scales so well with the creatures you're trying to reanimate. You can reanimate uh, cards I don't even like, like Shield Red, and have that be great in the lower power games. Or here's Tox Rule, here's Hullbreaker Horror. Good luck. Yeah, this card is it is um, clunky, right? It's not like the super smooth. It's five mana. You want to usually set up your graveyard, but it's so much mana advantage at five mana mana and just fills your it absolutely fuels you you know it's, what it is it's never dead it mills deck. it mills 10 percent of your deck mm -hmm. which is awesome for any deck that wants to play it if you have this in your deck and you, you could just start with 10 cards in your graveyard you would yeah this card is fantastic if you're playing a reanimator deck and you're not literally like one of the highest most sweatiest decks ever most highest power levels please try this it is very satisfying and very rewarding. Yeah, we're very high on like making your mana um, better, but I would try playing try playing this one over um, Victimize because Victimize is a good card that a lot of people play. I like this more, even though it's two more mana. You don't have to sacrifice the creature. Not that that's a huge issue. Doesn't target, and it doesn't target, so there's no blowouts, no chance to get blown out. And it's perfect. Uh, it's still fine if you're trying to rebuild on an empty board with an empty grave. It's it just does everything. And we got another card. What is it? Uh, it's Soul Guide Lantern in 1% of decks. This thing comes down, exiles a card from your graveyard, then you can pay one and sack it to draw a card, or just exile all of your opponent's graveyards. Yours is fine. What is extra spicy about this is that you just, yeah, like you said, you don't hit your graveyard, and you hit all three other players. A lot of effects in Commander will hit uh, one opponent's graveyard, maybe... Not even two. Always one opponent's graveyard. But this is just like, nope, hit all of them, which is so strong while leaving yours intact. Yeah, one of the coolest little synergies with this card is that you can make it a little bit toolboxy. A lot of decks have Urza Saga, way more than I thought. 98,000 of you are playing Urza Saga. That card's amazing, and I can't blame you for it. That's 6% like of decks. And if you if you were at all worried about, oh, what about price having a factor? It's like, that card's like $35, and there's 98,000 of them. And it's six times more play than Soul Guide Lantern, which is like 14 cents. So this card, it's a nice little toolbox. You don't even have to be like this artifact deck. We're, we've always been talking about getting more graveyard hate in your deck is going to really help you out and stop letting you get, you know, eaten alive by these graveyard decks that you just can't stop. I think, yeah, I really do think every single deck you build should have at least one Graveyard hate piece, and I think that's low. I play, I play I like two. I play two or three, depending on the deck, depending on if I can fit it in with the strategy of what I'm doing. 
this these cards are amazing. Soul yeah. Guide Lantern is one of the best ones. It only costs one mana to get rid of everyone's graveyard. That's so good. Like that rate is so high. Get rid of three players' graveyard for one mana. The only thing that's even competing with that is Bajuka Ball getting rid of one for zero mana. It's really one though. Yeah. Enters tap. That's what you're paying for. You pay a land entering taps instead of untapped. So it's really like the same amount of mana. Um, and the opportunity cost to put it in your deck. What are you cutting for this? This is just a cantrip. Cut a cantrip for this. I don't know. There's an infinite number of things you could replace for this. It when you don't need to hate graveyards, you don't do it. You just repl you hate the best thing and maybe still uh, mess somebody up and then just replace it. And it just feels amazing. Yeah. And if you're thinking in your head, Soul Guide Lantern, I want to play that. I want to play something that can't just with it. Play Relic of Progenitus. Play um, the other one, Lantern of the Lost. Play any one of these things. They're all super good. We, we're much higher in Soul Guide Lantern overall. Yeah. That one's, that's the one that's definitely underplayed. Yeah. Definitely underplayed. But all these other ones exist. If you're not playing one of them, play. Uh, Put one of those three in your deck. It'll help you a ton. Yeah, you're going to be missing out. You're missing out if you're not playing these cards. I'm telling you, I think we got a pretty great spread. And if you want to see some more stuff, well, guess what? Here's five things you need in your commander deck to make it better. Yes. Peace out, Tripe Scout.